Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today I'm going to fly the Airbus model of new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it is Airbus 320, beautiful machine but it's the default airplane and as you probably know I'm Boeing 737 pilot, I fly the real airplane uh, Boeing 737NG and here we are in Charles, Charles de Gaulle uh, airport it's the model of Microsoft Flight Simulator it's default airport as far as I know but it's very very detailed you have all the markings you have all the taxiways you have the runway 226 two, right as far as I remember and it's a very big airport it has to fly there many many times before but unfortunately now the Europe is closed for us due to Covid crisis and hopefully I'll fly there very very soon on my Boeing 737 uh, don't pay attention to my sunburns because recently I was at the aviation festival that took place in Ukraine, the biggest one on uh, this year and yes I got some of the sunburns but here we are in the Airbus cockpit so something new for me I would say it's more larger even from this model you can see that this cockpit is much larger compared to Boeing 737 you have lots of observer seats and you have a lot of place behind the first officer seat uh, behind uh, on Boeing 737 behind FO you have just a wall very close and behind the captain also you have some of the table there on the Boeing but here you have the seat so quite comfortable seats I would say as if you compare to the Boeing also I like the big windows big canopy it's a little bit larger compared to Boeing 737 but even on Boeing 737 the windows are quite large uh, compared to other different airplanes and on some of the types we have these small windows on Airbus you don't have them but I told you my friends that I don't really like the default models on flight simulator and that is why uh, you see in op in op, in op, in op it means you cannot press it, you cannot modify this system, you cannot operate with this system uh, what is this? this is a fire extinguisher for example if you have fire in your simulator, if you set the fire you cannot extinguish it and so you cannot follow the realistic procedure, uh, the same procedures that you may follow on uh, uh, PMTG version and on real aircraft in eight years it's some kind of inertial navigation system I think on Boeing it's called IRS and you cannot press it you cannot press it let's see what we can do here so here's hydraulic we cannot operate the hydraulic we cannot oh, PTU power transfer unit exactly the same name as we have on Boeing 707 engine 2 hydraulic pump electrical pump well the the meaning is the same so on uh, Boeing 707 we also have electrical driven hydraulic pumps and engine driven hydraulic pumps as far as I can see from row red manual on mm, you cannot mm, you cannot press it you cannot activate the ram air turbine it will be very interesting you know to have the model with the ram air turbine that pumps down from the fuselage and start to produce the electrical power it will be very interesting very very fuel fuel panel here as you see we can we can switch we can select the cross feed we can activate or deactivate well, they're activated like, like here and you just press it and you have off and I also used to fly the uh, ATR 72600 and the cockpit is very similar I mean this push buttons uh, etc so ATR uses the old technology used in Airbus before not the very old I would say they are quite new IDG in integrated generator drive that's the electrical system we have so we can activate, activate the fuel as you can see and what is here electrical yes bus tie contactor you cannot activate it APU generator you can switch it on or off correction or on external power cool you cannot switch off the IDGs engine generators you can switch them off air condition system APU bleed 
that's what we need for engine start on Boeing 737. You just open the APU bleed, switch off the packs, and here the packs are inoperative. Mm -hmm. Ram ear cannot operate. Engine bleeds, you can do it. So you can do unpressurized takeoff on this airplane model. Nice. What else? Anti ice. Can we use it? Yes, we can. We can use it. Mm. External lights. Yes, strobe lights. Different positions. Exactly as on Boeing 737. Beacon light. Wing light. Nav light. So everything you can use on this plane. What is here on the left side? We have flight control like control maybe it's the computers I think there uh, some of the computers that control fly-by-wire system on that airplane uh, emergency electric power so we can operate those computers I think emergency generator test and operative so everything here GPWS system control everything of this inoperative eh, default model what can I say Need to wait for better version of Airbus. Uh, what else? What else? So pressurization system. There's some interesting button there in pressurization system, as far as I remember. At least it was on ATR. So hydraulic air condition. No, we don't have here. Oh, here, here it is. It's the ditching button. So you cannot operate it. You cannot. Because this dishing button, it automatically closes uh, the main outfall valve, so the big hole, the, the valve is modulating from close to open position during the your... Tower, Gulf Air 1 at runway 26 right, ready for takeoff IFR to Bahrain. Someone is taking off. Gulf Air 1 hold short runway 26 right. Traffic is Airbus A20N on the runway. <laughs> we are on the runway. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, will take us a little bit, uh, a lot of time. To prepare for our flight because I'm first time here in Airbus. <laughs> I think you heard. Someone is waiting. I need to see it. Wow, it's interesting. Uh, so far, I don't know how to communicate with air traffic control. Someone is taxiing. Yes or no? I didn't see any traffic except of this aircraft over there. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, cargo fire extinguishing panel is inoperative. Pity, pity. That overhead panel, I think half of those systems are inoperative. That's the default plane, my friends. That is why you need to wait for a better version of Airbus. What I like here is detailed, you know, the graphic is detailed, the graphics and what can I say, it's quite real, looks quite real. Okay, here we have the, uh, on Boeing 737 I would call this thing MCP, mode control panel. On ATR you call this thing FGCP and I don't remember what does it mean, because I've flown ATR more than four years ago. <laughs> and what do you have in this, it's autopilot and flight director control panel, let's say. Uh, I can see from this part, from this perspective, that we don't have the level change mode, we don't have the heading select mode. It's completely strange panel for me. Okay, 5000 feet per set, and you can change. Okay, you can change it. It's perfect. Engage manage altitude mode. And that's all, yes. But you select only thousands. How to? Okay, I just select some increment. You can reselect. So this knob is for speed. Increase airs selected airspeed. Okay, let's try to select the airspeed of V2. Let it be 140 or 141. Let's say it's kind of average for this weight because we are half empty. I can see the level change, vertical speed. Okay, let's try this knob. Okay, I can see the vertical speed, and if you push it, you level off the aircraft. Hmm. 
Interesting. So we don't have the level of button or, or alt hold button. Uh, X speed. X pad. What does it mean? I don't know. Approach. It should activate the localizer and glide slope to intercept the atlas. Localizer. I think it's separate to activate to intercept the VR track. Well, quite interesting, I would say. Quite interesting. Flight director switch. I think you. Okay, it's like a Boeing 737. Not the switch, but the button. On Boeing, we have the switch, and here we have the button. Okay, they're already activated. Turn on uh, ILS info display. Okay, we'll turn it on. Uh, info display from both sides um, I would call this thing FS control panel it looks similar to Boeing 737 oh we have some other traffic see those diamonds so the other traffic in this airport around maybe they're taxiing but maybe they're flying okay we are the me waypoint NDB airport we'll select the airport oh see our position and you have LFPG the Charles de Gaulle airport we are in and let's go to our CDU MCDU I would call it and it's completely different my friends it is from what I can see it is completely different okay let's go closer to it oh man what should I do with it? I don't understand the thing. Deer. What does deer mean? Direct to a beam, progress, airport, performance. Oh, at least we have performance. V2, 134. Let's set it here. Come on. 132. So it's very 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 different compared to Boeing 134, sorry my friends. It's very different compared to Boeing 737 and G. Um, and CDU is very very different. So flight management computer probably also different. Need data position monitor position. Okay, we have the position I think. IRS2 seems like we have the iris position <laughs> flight plan discontinuity okay maybe I need to go to flight plan and somehow put uh, our departure airport and also the same arrival LFPG I think I need to put LFPG here somewhere in flight plan destination oh, let's say L F B G Come on Come on No nothing D R R mm, Dist 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 Maybe here No Progress No In it mm -hmm. From 2 Oh I see I'm going from LFPG to LFPG LF Oh, uh, correction, Papa Golf, Papa Golf. Here, come on. LFPG, LFPG, red turn. Yes, it's activated, I think. At least it manually set. Mm, go to deer, direct to. Mm, so you probably go with direct on this page. Okay, erase, 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 erase. No, eight. I need to set the SID for us. Airport flight plan. Let's go to this. Okay, departure. Uh, departure runway. Come on, I need two six right. Two six right. Where is two six right? Maybe here I need to go down, no, no. All right, need to go up. Two six right, and let's say, well, let's take this one. 
this one or this one insert all right we have something it's superb destination arrival hmm the same runway I think as for the first time my friends I'm doing quite well I think here in the simulator localizer ILS ILS uh, let's put ILS 09 left any any of, of arrival insert yes so we have some of the there's no legs page here maybe flight plan need to check everything yeah we have some points it's good and it's perfect my friends for performance page basically I don't know where to put your weight your zero fuel weight etc I don't I don't really know let it be like this and let's check our flight plan uh, so something here yes 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 so we're going straight then we'll make a u-turn probably I need to change okay what what more modes do we have on FS control panel I would call it FS control panel okay navigation arc we have and flight plan I think yes yeah, superb flight plan mm-hmm need to change the scale this is probably let's scale change all right it's quite big flight plan we have all right so we're gonna departure then maybe like this and go back or like this and go back we'll see we'll see it's very strange to operate the flight simulator and airbus especially yes you go to the right first it's not quite good because for left runway no we are from right runway you need to go to the right or probably for left i don't actually remember my friends the charts to go i don't have the chart with me so probably we'll check it later but as far as i think we need to go to the left probably from this part of the runway not to the right but anyway let's let's fly this airplane and also what else we have on the central panel we have engine instruments n1 egt n2 fuel flow it's exactly the same as we have on boeing 737 i mean the parameters are similar flaps uh, sleds flaps perfect indication here we have the indication of what a fuel supply have fuel supply from different fuel tanks fuel on board total and fuel flow on idle switching can we switch no it's an operative what else we have on pedestal pedestal we have engine master switches i think for to start the engine engine uh, mode normal ignition start crank hmm and those buttons are an operative stop trim Mm, what else we have this audio control panel so here you set the frequency and you change it here so you can set the different frequencies they're working fine but those are not okay and those three are working and those are not can you change modulate the volume yes you can for VR no you cannot do it Fluid light, all right. You can you can select the fluid light. That's the weather radar control panel, and it's an operative. It's the spoilers, speed brake spoilers, uh, trimmers, parking brake flaps. We are at one position. Let it be. Uh, transponder so here is set different codes mm, again the audio control panel which is very similar to Boeing 737 by the way cockpit door locking device locking system manual gear extension which is inoperative okay 
it's pretty much minim minimalistic uh, cockpit. I need also to find where should I put the frequency, but from what I heard from my colleagues who already flown the uh, Airbus, it doesn't need any frequency, the navigation frequency to intercept uh, the ILS system. Well, for me, it's quite weird, my friends. For me, I need to set the frequency, I need to set the course for Airbus. As far from what I heard, you don't need to do that stuff. Well, anyway, we have some route and we may fly, but before that, um, we have the engines working and I want just to start to restart the engines so they are both working and I want just to start the engines on this Airbus to start the engines I need to select the APU first I think this is the APU master switch and what is here I don't know I'll just start start and master switch I'll press them both then we'll connect the APU and just not to lose our data and then we're gonna start the engines on this uh, Airbus we'll just wait for APU to to be connected to our to go to be alive and connect to our system electrical supply and then we'll open the APU bleed so we'll do it like on point 737 okay start available it says I don't know so we're gonna open the APU bleed as on Boeing 737. Uh, we may open it just right now, and we will shut down the engines. Let's go and shut down it. I can hear the APU may so. Okay, just uh, shut down both of the engines with those uh, master switches. So I just shut it down the engines, and you see. And one is dropping, and EGT, EGT is also dropping here, and two dropping, and no fuel flow. And now it's time to start the engines. Uh, what I need, I need the APU bleed. So here is the APU bleed, I should uh, select it on. So APU bleed on. And let's try to start them. Oh, they turn amber. As you heard, we have some air supply. This is the no noise from air supply from the APU bleed. Let's start engine number two first. Let's go with the master switch. So we just open and ignition starts. Very, very, very easy. As you can see, we have N2 rotation here. Probably you may see it. Uh, from what I heard from my colleagues who flew on the Airbus, you didn't need to put on the fuel uh, like in Boeing, so it's automatically you have fuel flow, EGT, and one rotation was even before. So we have the fuel supply, it's automatic start on the Airbus, unlike on Boeing 737, and you have to put the fuel on manually. Here is totally automatic cycle. Let's see what the maximum NGT will be. Well, it's quite real, I would say, for CFM, at least for CFM 56 engines. Here we have CFM Leap 1 Alpha. As far as I remember, new engines. I would like to fly Max. Okay, they are quite stable. I would like to fly 0.737 Max with that engines. The Docker's barking. That's about the hydraulic system, my friends. It's not the dock. <laughs> Airbus barking sounds. It's quite nice. And what I, what I told you, okay, I want to fly the Boeing 737 Mars, Max with the same engines. Almost the same. Let's start engine number one. Because I like them. Those engines, they're superb. They're very efficient and very quiet. And from what I heard, uh, from like, also from my colleagues who flew Max, Boeing 737 Max, it's very interesting airplane to fly, and it's a very easy airplane to fly. I mean, the normal operation. We are not speaking about those two disasters that happened 
but for normal operation from what I heard from people who fly in Oman Airlines, Oman Air, they told that it's superb aircraft, it handles very very well, so you need just to prepare it for certification, get rid of those problems that also Boeing did to this aircraft and also it's not only also 100% of Boeing failure and uh, there was also a pilot failure uh, that led to that disasters but I hope they'll fix everything they'll train the pilots and that aircraft will be also very very safe as Airbus 320neo or maybe even safer okay we have both of the engines online and on Boeing I would manually connect the where is the, the electrical power electrical power yeah, so here I would manually connect the generators but on the Airbus you don't need to do that they are automatically connected so what I want to do I want to select the APU bleed off and everything of this off so I just shut it down I think the APU what is here wow so many airports I need to get rid of it by selecting this button okay that's much better and now my friends let's fly somewhere so we have the V2 airspeed heading select probably we don't need it and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this thrust levers to FLX MCT I think or maybe Toga maybe Toga is better I don't know I used to fly the Airbus real flight simulator just once but I didn't select any of the switches you know I was just flying with the side stick and that's all so we are in the cockpit starting our takeoff roll we will skip all the ATC communication okay the speed is rising should be around V1 let's go and take off all right I like the Airbus because it has the auto trim function it's superb so positive rate gear up come on gear up and we need to fly somewhere I think it will fly automatically no because it's automatic airplane <laughs> Okay, I need to set very quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, I didn't see anything. Okay, I need to set the speed. I'll reduce the thrust a little bit. I'll set the speed of maybe 220 initially. And I put this uh, thrust lever to climb. Climb the tent over here. I think, and I need to to switch on the auto throttle oh it's on auto throttle is on and we have 5000 5000 manually set but it's not reaching our 5000 feet so I just press the level off button come on oh I need to select the autopilot sorry <laughs> what modes do we have okay what modes do we have we have Alt Star Descent Descent mode Very interesting Okay, we are reaching our speed So we need to select the flaps up uh, Okay, flaps up I think this is the minimum Maneuvering speed for flaps up we, The speed is rising, why? Come on Engage Manage Speed mode Why, why are we continue flying faster? Hmm, very interesting. Throttle climb, descent mode. We are descending to 5000 feet, I think. Navigation mode on, so we are following this scheme, I think. But why are we maintaining the magenta speed. Magenta means 
the program speed uh, from the flight management computer. I think I need just to switch it on. Engage airspeed mode and set the speed of 220. I think it's better. Let's fly it 220 knots. Yes, and we, we are decelerating. So we turn the manual. So there is the switch that controls from magenta from flight management computer. And you can go to sign like this. I think this color, this blue color is sign color. And you manually set it. Okay, we have alt hold at 5000 feet. Uh, also manually preset. That's the logic, I think. So what can we do? We can go direct to call if. I think we can do it. Dear, direct to call if call if. Where is the call if? Oh, here it is. Uh, direct. Come on. All right. It's just thinking. To make our life more easier, not to fly all this SID pattern, you know, so we can go to Colif, then we can fly like this to make it to make it shorter. And we are around our, we are near near, very near to our runway that we want to land on. One more airport. And then see the runway. One more airport there. Lots of airports in Paris. Yeah, I like Airbus. It looks absolutely fantastic. Absolutely nice airplane. I'm a little bit confused with the, uh, you know, automatic flight. I don't need this stuff. Okay, let's go here. Cockpit. I'm a little bit confused to using this automatic. I so far I don't know how to s fly with heading select, and we're gonna try it. So let's just turn here. Yeah, I can see this sign thing over here. It's moving. It disappeared. Mm. Very strange. Maybe I need to push it. I'll push it down. Oh, this line appeared, and our route became dashed. You know, the dashes. Maybe I can turn now. Yes, yes, it's very, very easy. So I'll press again. Heading select. Come on. And I put the nav active now. Perfect, perfect, I like it. So very, very easy. So if you press it once, you go with the heading select. If you press it again, I think you go back to nav mode. Heading cell or nav mode. That's two modes that you really need. As for descend and climb, let's go with it. So let's fly to 6,000 feet here. Uh, push to level off. It means push to alt hold, I think level of aircraft or need to engage vertical speed flight pass angle mm. okay let's go with the vertical speed plus 600 feet per minute see what happens vertical speed plus zero mm. maybe we need to engage it somehow No. Vertical speed zero. Why? Uh, still have some problems with the vertical mode. Vertical speed. We are in vertical speed. Why? Come on. Okay, vertical speed plus seven hundred. I don't. I don't know how I did it. 
I don't really know. <laughs> so we climb with uh, 700 feet per minute to reach our 6000 feet, probably. Uh, I said uh, 6000 feet of altitude, but why we have sign of 5000 feet? I said 6000 feet. Why the heft sign of 5000? I don't really understand this plane, my friends. Don't really understand this automatic system, but somehow we fly. Somehow. And we'll try to intercept the ILS system. Inoperative, inoperative. Terrain on navigation display. Okay, we are approaching 6,000 feet right now, so it should level off, but it didn't. I said 6,000 feet here. Maybe I need to press it, engage altitude mode. Maybe I need to... Yes, I need to press it. Alt star. So you put the numbers that you want the altitude or the speed or vertical speed as far as I understood and you just push it from what I see it's, it's like this so far my friends I do like this airplane it's modern it's fantastic but I need to you know to work with this uh, automatic system it's not very very comfortable for me because I'm a Boeing pilot and you have all the modes here and its buttons but here you press these buttons you release the buttons you put the numbers and what to do next you know I'm a little bit confused but it's still confused and it's my first try as I said to you on this flight simulator but also I tried two times to fly the Airbus uh, and once the first time it was on the interview at the interview with Viz Air Airlines so I wanted to fly the Airbus there even before I started my uh, career in uh, Ukraine International Airlines. I went to Viz Air. It was, I think, seven years ago or something, even before I went to Garuda, Indonesia. And I passed this interview, and maybe in the future I'll tell you why. Uh, in the end, I, I'm not employed in Viz Air, but I was able to fly that simulator there, and I passed the interview. I passed everything. And later on, maybe I'll tell you why, why, why I decided to. The flying Garuda Indonesia and while I'm not a Viz Air pilot for now Viz Air is a nice airline my friends very flying we need to select the nav here it's nav so we're passing calling why are we not turning we need to turn my friends to to the different so what what It shows the left. Why are we turning to the right? Uh, okay, what point do we have after this point? Colif more plug and that's all. What's about the approach? What's about the approach? Fly plan. Destination. Uh, arrivals. Runway Alice zero nine. Let it be insert. And let's go to. Yeah, what is happening? I need to go to final approach fix, my friends. To final approach fix. Where did the final approach fix? All right, let's put it back again. Uh, arrivals, uh, ILS. <sighs> Maybe I will choose the other one, this one probably. Insert. And let's go to FF or Inori. Let's go to Divim, the closest point to to our. Uh, runway direct let's see where where we should go 
Okay, somewhere to the runway. No. No. I put the other star and now we are going to somewhere there. But I need to go here. And I don't have this point, you know, Charlie fix 09 here. So I have the latest point diving and that's all. I'm unable to do it in uh, navigation mode. So I don't have this Bannox, etc. It's crazy. So we go with the heading cell, I think. Go with the heading cell and go to the right. We'll intercept the eyeless uh, with a heading cell. So we're gonna we're gonna go there to the final fix. And this is why we need descent. Descent to let's say I don't remember the uh, glide slope entry altitude. Let's set three thousand and let's set the vertical speed of 1000 okay vertical speed set 3000 feet set and we are going here to this final a little bit to the right maybe to the left and after on intercept heading, we'll press the approach mode and let's see what happen. What will happen? Interesting. We have some of the tailwind will be on approach. Yeah, navigation display is very informative, and this is also very informative. This part on Boeing 737 we have larger display, I think. Uh, I mean not the display itself, but this uh, artificial horizon part. Okay, and I will continue try to find this point, my friends. Where is this point? Maybe we need to go to the flight plan. Okay, here we have this point. Can we go direct to it? Can we go? I need to go direct to this point. Here I don't have it. How to set direct? On Boeing 737 you just put it active. You see this point is active and you go to for example the point you need CF09 uh, 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 left Charlie Fox09 left and you just put it you go to the you put it in the scratch pad you go to your active point and you push it in active and that's how you do direct on point here you go only from this menu but I don't have this point maybe we need to press it CF09 left no Uh, uh, uh. What is there? Okay, let's put terrain off. Terrain display. If we put it on, you can see the river, etc. Very detailed on Airbus. And maybe here we need to set the heading to final. Let's go with the heading. So here is the heading and 20 more miles to this final approach, 22 miles to this uh, approach, final approach fix, or maybe even 24. 
I'll go like this. Interesting, very interesting, my friends. I wonder if we have the ILS identification somewhere here. Have the scale for ILS. Have the ILS set in our uh, data for flight management computer. Maybe we need to go with ILS over here. Here. Maybe. No, it's not the ILS. Maybe let's go to VR. Something strange, something really strange with this airplane, but anyway. Anyway, I think I just feel my I just feel uncomfortable flying it. On Boeing everything is understandable. Well it's because I'm I'm Boeing captain, not the Airbus captain. Okay, I think the three thousand feet is enough to intercept the localizer and glass slope. So far I don't see the eyeless indent or other stuff. Maybe I need to put it in, uh, to go to the flight plan and go to destination arrival and we'll just set the eyeless without any arrival. Enter. I don't I don't know how to set the intercept course you know on Boeing, if you go direct, you have also the option. You may set the final approach course, and you have this infinite line, and you have your side deviation from this track, cross track. Here, we don't have anything. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's descend to 2500. At least I can descend. I understood how to do it with a vertical speed also so you need to set the volume and then press so we're going to descend 2500 just in case because I don't remember the glide slope entry altitude so just to make sure that we'll intercept it we'll descend like this I think it's very high in real life. I don't have the iPad with me right now, uh, so I just forgot to take it for my flying. I think it's more than 3,000 feet to intercept the glide slope in Charles de Gaulle Airport. But anyway, there are four runways there. Four runways. Two short runways for landing, that are, I think, the outbound runways, and two inbound long runways. It is used uh, for takeoff because for takeoff you need longer distance than for landing as usual let's go to the left a little bit So we have ILS, ILS 09 left, identified, superb. It means that we will have the localizer bar here and glide slope bar. I mean the deviation box, you know. That is superb and we should fly them. Nice, nice airplane. Everything is so simple at first, but then you start to operate with it I think it's quite complicated become complicated or maybe I need just to fly this airplane a little bit more to understand okay we're approaching the final soon and let extend let's extend the flaps for us the limitation for Boeing 77 the limitation is 250 knots I think for Airbus it's the same flaps position one to extend the flaps uh oh uh oh, we are over spinning. For Airbus, it's less than 220 to extend the flaps. Crazy. Even on Boeing 77 class 6, it's 230 knots. Ok, 
Okay, we are approaching to our final. And let's set the approach mode on. No. What happened to our... What ha What is happened to... Why are we banking? What is ha What's happened to our heading? Okay. And... Where is the local... It should be localizer here, arm, and glide slope probably here or here, arm. Oh, it seems like we intercepted the localizer, but no, no localizer mode arm. I think it's the simulator back. It shouldn't be like this. Okay, let's reduce the speed. Uh, select the gear down. And flaps. And speed, let's say, one sixty eight. Let it be. But we are flying, we are not going down, and the runway may be ahead, ahead of us. Where is the localizer? Where is the glide slope? Well, for glide slope maybe we are too high, but for localizer, you see my friends, we are on the runway track, but no localizer bar. Maybe this small one? I, I'm confused. I'm confused. Because I pressed approach mode, first it went to the right, now it went to the left no glass, maybe it's the simulator you know maybe it's the simulator problems hmm, very strange, very very strange alright, let's fly it I will use the external camera for a moment to check where we are. Where are we? Okay. Seems like the runway is runway ahead somewhere. I don't see it so far. Oh. Maybe it is here somewhere. Yes, it is. My laptop is not very powerful, my friends, so that is why this simulator may be lagging, but it's really the simulator problem that we don't have these deviation bars and localizer also. Very interesting. <laughs> it's the first time I see it. It should be here. I know on Airbus you have almost the same indication. Localizer and glide slope and no bars interesting we are approaching the runway little by little use the scale so here is the runway seven miles away and up this up this Maybe everything, everything is working fine, but it uses the uh, enough enough approach or something. Not the ILS tuning. Well, let's go with the full flaps straight away. It's just the joy, joy flight. So let's reduce the speed of the V2 was 134, so the approach speed. I'll set to 140. No, 140 is it's not okay. Let's make it 145 at least. Let me checklist. 
Okay, speed brake, speed brake, speed brake. We need to arm the speed brake. I think like this. Mm, maybe. Boom, boom. I think you arm it like this. Maybe. I, d I don't really know. Speed brake arm. Oh, auto brake, auto brake. We need to select the auto brake. I think it's here. Landing gear, auto brake low, medium or maximum. Let's set the maximum deceleration. Anti skid on off. Anti skid and nozzle steering. Well, at least it's the same place uh, as with the Boeing 737. Let's see a little bit higher. See what happens. Maybe we have the auto land. For Boeing 737, auto land, we need two autopilots to be switched on for landing, but here on Airbus I don't know what should you do for auto land. Maybe go fly manually? What do you think? Okay, let's fly manually. A little bit higher. Higher. Wow! What happened? <laughs> At least we are on the ground. Wow, it's crazy. I pull it up, but it, it moved the sideways. Maybe I need to calibrate my joystick, you know. My side stick. Okay. Nice, it stopped. So at least we were able to do the approach, to make the approach. Just to locate the runway. There is no replace on this flight simulator. It's quite pity. And I didn't crush it, so I'm quite happy. <laughs> I was able to make some approach. I need to calibrate my side stick because then I pull it up. Oh, I see. When I pull up, it, it moves a little bit to the right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. I need to just to calibrate my joystick and it will be fine. No problem with that. I don't know how you would do it on Microsoft Flight Simulator. How to calibrate? I know how to calibrate on M FSX Microsoft Flight Sim on prepared 3D, but here so far I don't really know. All right, my friends. I hope you like this video. I know you are awesome guy. That is why you need to follow the special awesome guy checklist. First, like this video, then subscribe to my channel, then ring the bell, whatever it means. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time. Pam pam.